Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching from. Thank you for uh, joining us for day two of CryptozoaCon. We hope that you were able to join us yesterday. It was an amazing day. We really had a great time. Uh, for me personally, it's, it's wonderful to see the engagement with all of our fans and just seeing the, the stars that we have on our team, getting the opportunity to uh, share with you the insights into what goes on and how we build products and um, you know what the excitement and passion we have for what we do um, is matched by you. So it's really fun and we're happy that you're able to be with us. We hope that you're all doing safe and well uh, and that you've enjoyed day one. Day two is going to be exciting as well. Uh, Amanda and John Vineyard. Uh, Amanda is our product manager on collectibles and John Vineyard is our, our uh, graphic design uh, director. He leads the whole design team. Uh, they're going to go over how collectibles are made uh, and uh, some of the insights into that and, and show you some, some uh, peeks behind the screen of how things work. Um, and then Deacon, we're going to go pretty games heavy on that uh, after that point. And we have some great, great guests joining us um, as far <laughs> as game designers. Uh, and Deacon will be leading that. Um, Amanda is our overall hostess, so she'll always be on. John and I will be dropping in and out at different times, as will other guests. So with that in mind, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, it's really fun for us, as I said. Um, it really fuels us. We're, we're sad that all these conventions and cons are going away, especially today, learning that San Diego Comic-Con is officially canceled. It, it breaks our hearts because um, we really enjoy being uh, with you all um, in person and learning from you and seeing you interact with our products and what we do. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Deacon real quick and he'll go over what to look forward to from a game standpoint today. And then we'll yep. go into Amanda and John's part. So thank you so yeah, much so again. Wonderful. So we're going to be pretty brief on my, just to let you guys know what's coming up today with games. We're going to talk about Epic Spell Wars Hell High and some other Epic Spell Wars stuff that you haven't seen yet uh, today at 1230 after that. Uh, and a little bit more about Annihilageddon. Then we'll move into a little bit of a quick uh, play of Pantone with Scott Rogers, the designer of Pantone, uh, and talk about that in his, as a design process. Moving into Cerberus as a whole, if you don't know what Cerberus is, it's our big deck building engine that everything is kind of built into. And that will transition us into the end of the con today with uh, DC deck building Dark Knight's Metal, which is hiding right back here behind me. And uh, we'll talk about that and finish off today. But until then, let's go ahead and talk about collectibles. Amanda, John, it's up to you and I'll just disappear. All right, sounds good. All right, so to kick off the CryptoZoicon today, we're talking about this lady right here. I am so excited to share her with you guys. She's been a project long in the making and uh, everybody that has seen her has only been excited about her and it's just been really great to hear, really great to feel as it's been like this total passion project that, you know, um, I've been working on for a while. Um, hold on, our live stream just died on Facebook. <laughs> So bear with me real quick while I get that back up so that our fans on Facebook can still participate. Um, Sean said he he loves the bass on that, uh, which I oh, think... Oh, the cat? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it is kind of all about the details on these figures and paying special attention to the bass and all that is oh, yeah. really critical, so... Yeah, no, thanks for pointing that out. Like, this figure in particular definitely has a lot of really interesting details that... I think people just don't miss. So something that I wanted to share with you today is all of the prototypes. So you can see some of the detail here on the red clay prototype. Yeah, so, um, all right, looks like Facebook is just not wanting to work with us today. All right, I think we're good. Okay, anyways, so apologies for that distraction. Technical <laughs> difficulties happen. So um, now that that is squared away, I wanted to show with you the concept art because that's where it all starts, right? So I'm gonna sh screen share, share. Cool, so you can see my desktop. So it all started with this lady right here. So this is actually the first concept art that we actually had of the figure. This was done by Pedro Estudillo, one of our very talented artists that we get to work with. Um, so this was his first pass at the figure. Now, you can probably tell at this point, she does look different. Um, we also had another artist rendering down. We continued forward with this, adding color and some more things like that, some more detail. Um, 
So some further development was done by Kyle Wadiga, who um, was uh, in the collectibles department before me and with me. Um, so he developed it a little bit more, but it was still missing a little something. And so we were just like, what else can we do this figure? What else can we do to um, add excitement and make it a little more interesting, a little more uh, true to the film? And so then uh, I took another pass on it. I changed some of the shapes, um, updated some of the, <laughs> the footwear, um, some things like that, did another uh, texture pass. Um, I gave her that, that hooded eye a little bit um, that, you know, add that little bit of sass that we enjoy so much. Um, and so we also had another variant where she had the hair. And at, at first we were gonna have both a, um, one with her hair in the cowl and one with it out, um, the sort of battle damage version, but people liked this edition so much that we just decided that, you know, we wanted to make the best figure possible. Let's just go for it. So there's only the one edition and it is the battle damaged, you know, sort of late movie Catwoman. Um, so yeah, that's the concept art that we developed for the figure. Um, and so once we have the concept art, uh, we send it out to revisions um, with uh, the DC Comics. So they have to review and um, pass everything. Um, they have to, you know, make sure that she's up to snuff, that she's, you know, exactly what they would like. Um, and then from there, once it's approved, um, like for example, um, she actually, uh, I actually had to add more battle damage. <laughs> like not all of these scenes were torn and they wanted more tears. So going back and forth, making sure that she's as accurate to the film as possible. Um, we get revisions like that. And once they give us the green light, they get to begin sculpting. So this is actually a photo of, um, the final sculpt that the center or that the sculptor sent to me. He'll send me videos and things like that to check out and look at the progression of the figure as she goes. Um, and I'll send him back different messages as well to make sure that um, the figure and the detail is as true to the uh, concept art as possible. There's a lot of things that change going from, you know, a, a two-dimensional drawing to a three-dimensional figure that get lost or small things like her eyelashes were too far away from her head and I that was probably going to cause some issues with the tooling and like later production stuff so it's like hey can you push her eyelashes against her face or you know um strange different things that sort of pop up here and there or um making certain surfaces flat or certain surfaces rounder or making sure that the hair actually comes out of the places where it does in the film. I looked up, you know, stills of the images and paused frame by frame to see if I could get a clear image of where all the tears are and things like that. Um, yeah, and so then once we have a sculpt that we're happy with, we also send it again for approval. Um, our sculptor was able to do a 3D render for us with some paint as well, so we could get an idea of what she would look like finalized, which is super exciting to see it starts to come together at such an early stage. Um, we send all of that off to approval with DC Comics and uh, Warner Brothers and they approve, disapprove, ask for changes, but she went through with flying colors at this point. Um, so they were pretty happy with her. Um, and so from there we start working on prototypes. <laughs> all right, so from there, which, by the way, if you have any questions, if I'm going too fast, we have a Q&A feature down at the bottom of the screen, and you can leave questions there for us, and we'll circle back around to them near the end of the show. But um, So then after that, we figure out which factory we want to use, getting prices, quotes, things like that, production samples. And um, once we settle on what factory we would like to work with, um, they begin to send us stuff like this. So once we have um, our final sculpt, we will send them, um, or once we have the final like digital sculpt file, they will send us a prototype. So this is basically like, is this what you want? They'll show us where they like, um, since they're assembled in pieces, you'll see like on her arms, you can see like some sort of seams or things like that, or like you'll, they'll, they actually sent this in pieces so that I could see all of the different separate pieces. Like you can see where they decided to put her hair pieces and things like that. The whip is actually a separate, it's its own separate piece. Um, her hand is actually, uh, I think it's two separate pieces. So there's her arm 
and then there's actually a joint here at the bottom of her hand, so her fingers will wrap around the whip. You can kind of see. So you can start to see how it comes in pieces. Sometimes they'll do it with the red, uh, red clay prototype, or they'll actually send us like injection pieces, like some of you may recognize this as the bombshell Catwoman. So sometimes they'll send it in, you know, injection, injected pieces like this, so you can kind of see how it will be injected and put together. Um, other times they'll send the red wax, sometimes they send both. Um, it's all a matter of who you're working with and how you would like to work with them. Here she is. One of the little ladies that started it all. <laughs> um, so it's a lot, it's a lot of communicating and guess and check because, you know, we're working with teams all across the world. So, um, yeah, so then once you have sort of a physical representation of this is the quality, this is what she's going to look like, this is what our mold is going to be, they begin to work on um, the molds. So big, huge um, tools that they inject the vinyl into and things like that. So usually around this time, we'll get a paint sample. Either we'll commission it from like a local factory or uh, the factory will send us one as well. So this is the one that we actually had at New York Toy Fair which if we have time, I'll tell you all of the mishaps of the prototypes at New York Toy Fair, because that's just an insane story to tell. This little lady has been through a lot, a lot. Um, but we'll usually get a paint sample around that time to, um, again, get approved with Warner Brothers or to work with the factories on like, yep, this is how we want the paint to look. Um, just again, clarification, practice basically. Um, and then once they send us a paint sample, we approve it and then we can oh um but once they so that'll usually happen while they're working on tooling because that's a long process but then once the tooling is done they'll send us something that looks like this which i bet you've seen around sort of i know funko sends out a lot of these different sort of like white injected um figures uh these are called test shots um and so basically it's the first use of the mold so it's sort of like they, they're really flimsy, they're white, they're um, kind of a cheaper grade vinyl. What they do is they just take whatever sort of scrap they have lying around and they inject it into the mold just to prove that, you know, this is the mold that we're using for your whole production. Like, check it out. Here's the first thing that's ever been injected into this mold. Um, so they'll send us that to check out too, to make sure that production is going smoothly. Um, and then after that, once everything's happy, you hit the go button and they begin production. And then at that point, we will need, um, you know, packaging assets, things like that, figuring out box design, which that was all my job. Now it gets handed to JV <laughs> on okay. sort of package design and things like that to, to really like tidy up the end of, you know. Qu quick question for you. Yeah. Um, do you know what 3D modeling program they used uh, for the sculpting, the digital sculpting? Um, let's see. So we, the sculptor that we typically do for the bombshells, his name is Anders Ansboro. Mm -hmm. He uses ZBrush and he can uh, send us ZBrush files. Okay. Yeah. Geyser was asking that. So, um, ZBrush, I, uh, just wanted to get that question in there real quick, get that answered for him. Um, the, uh, packaging, when we, when we do the packaging, we, uh, usually get some sort of assets from the from DC from DC in this case um, mm -hmm. they'll give us you know some logos depending on the packaging they may give us um, some photography and then we take that and then we we really look at the product and we try to uh, marry the look of the packaging to the product and try to imagine the product inside it and um, you know, support the look of the product as best we can. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, we really liked the leather on the um, on the figure and all the stitching and everything. Uh, and Sophia, one of our designers, took that and she's creating packaging that has um, a spot gloss on the stitching that gives it kind of a raised effect. And um, we also use obviously the the Batman 
uh, Returns logo and the DC logos and things like that. And then also she's brought in some of that um, purple color that you see on the, the poster behind um, Amanda there. Mm -hmm. And f for all of our packaging, we get uh, a dye line from the factory. And uh, that, that will fit whatever the figure is inside it. For the bombshells, obviously, we are uh, trying to keep all the packaging consistent. This is an old Mara figure we did. Um, so the size of the box is the same. We try to sh really show the figure so you see what you're getting. And um, we have different uh, packaging. We have different exclusives, things like that. So for some... Uh, some of the packaging will do variants, you know, like there's the golden goddess, we'll put gold foil on that. We um, try to make that consistent. Sometimes for exclusives, we have different stickers and things we put on there. Um, this is a old Kripkins box here, which, um, so there's just a different thing required for each packaging. You know, sometimes we'll do these, these tins um, and we'll get some information from the factory and then we'll just try to do whatever we think um, communicates the feel of the uh, of the figure the best as best we can um, and we have to like uh, Amanda was talking about uh, going back and forth with DC and getting different approvals at different stages um, and we will uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that feedback from the from the licensors from DC in this case mm -hmm. and they'll tell us you know uh, oh, we, we don't think this quite fits with the branding. Oh, we love this. So we follow that. And then also, of course, um, the more products we do, the more feedback we get from you guys, from the people who buy the products. And we always appreciate that because, um, you know, there's those of us in the office and we do our research and our homework, but um, a lot of great ideas come from feedback we get, uh, especially at these conventions and things, which uh, when people were really interacting with people, uh, they can tell us what they love about the, the packaging or the product or what they, they wish was different. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of different opinions out there and, but we really try to try to take that into account and, um, uh, use that information going forward. So, uh, yeah. we do love the feedback that we get from people. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why we were disappointed that a lot of these conventions were canceled is because, we weren't going to be able to interact as easily, but um, mm -hmm. this does give us the opportunity to get questions and feedback and, you know, read things to say, Oh, you know, uh, I love this about it. I love the, yeah. the packaging for this, that. So um, I actually have the packaging for the Catwoman if you guys want to see it. All right. Let's see. Oh, it's kind of small. <laughs> <laughs> So you can see where the white stitching is. Um, that will be kind of have a raised effect to it, a raised glossy effect to it. Um, I know it's a little bit, we're kind of used to seeing it this way, but you'll see where the, the yellow lines are on here is where the cuts and folds are. Uh, this is the, if you unfolded the box and laid it flat. So that whole center area will be cut out where the window is and you'll be able to see her. Um, and then this purple is the inside of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'll be the background that you see her yes. up against. Sort of like the, the, the poster I have in my office. Yeah. I actually and, stole that from New York. To well, stole. We, it's ours. But I brought it back from <laughs> New York Toy Fair in my carry-on just so that I could take it back to my office. Yeah. So Sophia, one of our designers, Sophia, did this. And uh, I think she did a great job. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the printed piece and seeing the figure inside of it. Um, we're really excited about this yeah. one. Um, let's see. So we have a couple questions in the chat, which is fun. Um, how much time does this whole process take? Now, that's a, that's a really good question as far as collectibles go. It's a long time. Um, it's very quick to say, but it definitely takes like a really long time. Um, definitely, we try to have like an outline of at least like nine months just to have wiggle room for um, adequate communication and things like that, just to, you know, clarify things. Um, and like revisions go back and forth with um, DC Comics, they sort of have a uh, like 10 business day, you know, policy if we have anything that we need them to check. So it can be, it takes a lot of time to just keep a lot of moving pieces moving. 
Um, so anywhere from like nine months to a year, especially if there's like delays and things like that. So that's sort of why a lot of things will get announced because we want to get talking about it and get excited about it. But like if one thing like gets delayed, it becomes like a waterfall of stuff. And so then it's just like, ah, heck, you know, it's just like, oh, we can't, you know, it, it'll, it'll sort of like take up time someplace else and, um, things like that. Hey, um, uh, Amanda, let me, uh, throw a couple questions at you. Um, yeah. What variants are we doing for this Catwoman? That's a good question. We have not announced any yet. Okay. Um, though I wouldn't be surprised. I'm just saying that we've done a heck of a lot of golden goddesses, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a golden goddess Catwoman somewhere someday, but we definitely have a lot of concept art. It's just a matter of like time and place and things have gotten kind of complicated again with like cursed coronavirus nonsense. So, yeah. um, but it's definitely not impossible, but we haven't technically announced anything. All right. Uh, another question is what are the, what materials are the models, the prototypes um, made of the ones that you showed? Yeah. Um, there's actually a whole different, like a bunch of different types of things that uh, the prototypes can be made of based on what they're for. Mm -hmm. um, this one was 3D printed plastic just because we wanted to see the sculpt in real life, basically. So it was just mm -hmm. kind of fast, kind of cheap. It's kind of stripey um, just because we wanted to see it, check it out. It's hollow. So that's just straight up plastic. Um, this one right here is red clay. Um, they're incredibly fragile. Um, if you breathe on them wrong or pick it up wrong, it could, it could break. I'm super scared of that whip for, yeah. for sure. Um, let's see, these guys are actually, uh, white wax. Um, so they were used for, um, paint masters. So to sort of, um, you know, apply paint, the white would show really well and they accept paint really well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also have some resin ones um, over there in my office. Uh, we, there's also like sort of like a gray resin that we uh -huh. use a lot too that's um, pretty, pretty sturdy. And um, that one is another one that you can use just to kind of get an idea of what the uh, figure is going to look like. All right. Uh, kind of on a similar uh, path here. Have you ever thought about turning some of these figures into injection molded models um, for the fans to do custom paints with? Has that been something we've, considered? Yes, actually. Um, that is definitely something that we've considered. I know a lot of people um, actually do custom paints of the bombshells, which is really fun. I'm in the collector's group, so I get to see all of those really cool sort of custom figures that are made. Um, same with Kripkins. People uh, custom paint a lot of Kripkins and things like that. Um, but uh, that's actually something that we would super love to do for Kripkins Unleashed, which if you saw my panel yesterday, you got to see these guys up close and personal. But um, we would love to send like Cthulhu's out or um, especially Bob. Bob here is the star of the show. Who am I kidding? Um, Bob is definitely a fan favorite. We would love to send Bob's out to a bunch of different like uh, designer vinyl artists or like um, some of the designers that have worked on Kripkins, like, uh, uh, Kyle Wadiga and Jeff Parker and see if like they want to do their own custom bobs and things like that and see what people do with the um, just like straight up just blank white you know what, That'd be fun, what yeah. what's your idea for Bob you know so mm -hmm. um, definitely something that we want to do we did custom um, little bombshells where we sent them out to sketch card artists and we put them in our trading cards um, but yeah, I think that it would be really fun to do with these guys, especially since they're bigger. There's like a lot more canvas to work with. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of people are asking about um, the possibility of doing some other uh, male characters and either the, the bombshells or little bombshells line. I know somebody had mentioned on here they'd love to see Michael Keaton as Batman. Oh um, my gosh. Which that would, would be, be cool. So fun. You know, there's a lot of hoops to jump through. Um, yeah. So yeah, people are asking about Batman specifically. Um, okay. Is that something you see in the future? I know we've done kind of a little bombshells, uh, Batman. Yeah, um, let's see. We, um, we, I know we had concept art out for a bombshells Batman and he um, was, he was uh, canceled. Just, 
plain and clear he was canceled. Um, there's a lot of things that go into whether a collectible gets made or not, like not even just like the production side, but um, there have been some really cool ideas that we've had that we've wanted to get behind and we're ready to do. But at the end of the day, um, since we're a manufacturer, if a um, store doesn't pick it up, then we don't have anywhere to sell it to. Like we definitely do sell directly to fans a lot, which is really fun. But um, when you're dealing with the thousands and thousands of volumes that we have to do on a figure to make it profitable, you have mm -hmm. to kind of have some help. And so that's sort of our business model is that we work with, you know, stores like Hot Topic, we work with a lot or like Target or, you know, Walmart or whoever else and local comic book stores, Diamond Comics, things like that. So if they, for whatever reason, they just, they don't want it. It doesn't work for them at this time, you know, timing, like they're just like, Hey, we did, we just can't carry this right now or whatever else. Then that is enough to stop the whole thing and just be like, well, I guess we can't make that. So sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Cause there's just a lot of different things. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a couple other pe things people are asking about going forward. If, uh, if there will be a Bombshells Series 4, will there be Series 3 Golden Goddesses? Um, so there's a lot of excitement about this stuff going forward. It, can you give us any insight as to what to look for going forward with little Bombshells and Golden Goddesses? Um, let's see. Um, things to look forward to. Um, I don't think we've officially announced anything yet, so I'm not sure okay. if I can really speak to that. We might not be able to say. Um, okay. Um, there's actually, I will say um, for the little bombshells, I think um, I've talked in a lot of the collectors groups about this is that um, they, so as far as a whole set, there's definitely characters left if we were to do a series four, but the thing is, is they're pretty obscure. And again, that's one of those things where it's like, if we can't get a hot topic or somebody else to like, recognize this or have it to do well in like big distribution then where our hands are kind of tied so basically what i'm saying is series four is kind of challenging on our end to produce however the way that we're deciding to keep bombshells still going is convention exclusives like we had that blue and pink harley coin that still came out so mm -hmm. and she sold out in two hours which is yeah. super cool so it made me super happy that you guys are still super excited about the little bombshells and the potential that they have so we're definitely going to continue doing like every once in a while like you know ex special exclusives or store exclusives or things like that um just you know to keep to keep making them and we want to tie them into different things like games maybe or whatever yeah. else um and so yeah um so we'll definitely keep making them and it's just going to be kind of one by one instead of like a whole set gotcha um yeah people are asking because you know these limited ones they go so quick um right Dana Marie's asking if we'd ever restock the Barnes and Noble's Harley Quinn, Barnes and Noble Harley Quinn statue. Um, and I know a lot of these people want them and they go quick, but uh, right. you know, if, if people make sure they, they um, subscribe to our newsletter on our website, through our website, things mm -hmm. like that, they will be notified when these things are going on sale so they can right. jump on sales quick. Um, yeah. Um, it is not often that we reissue um, mm -hmm. exclusives or products. I mean, we have done it in the past, but um, it's definitely, definitely not typical. So usually all that we make is kind of all that there will be. So once an item sells out or sells through, then our hands are kind of tied. Yeah. Uh, Whacked Fox here asks, are we going to start making acrylic cases for the taller bombshells? Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, there is actually a company that does that. Uh, let me get their link. Um, they, so, um, they're not acrylic cause acrylic is, you know, would be really nice. Um, but, um, there is a website that actually does have, um, I actually have one on my desk because I have a Harley Quinn signed by Paul Dini with a personal inscription. Oh, it makes it incredibly difficult to see, but it is a box protector. Hey, Corey, we're wrapping up our uh, collectibles panel real quick with one final question. But yeah, so there are these like plastic protectors if you do want a box protector to keep your collectibles. And I will drop the link in the chat. Uh, right. 
there. Um, oh, my chat's being upset. Um, but I will drop it in the chat once I <laughs> fix that. But um, there is a, uh, there you go. There's a company that does actually make them. They're um, just sort of like a plastic sort of protector. So it is protection. But um, so if anything, we would partner with them because they're already doing it. So way to go. So yeah, that was our collectibles panel. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for putting up with all the technical difficulties. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope that you walk away with something really fun and hope that you learned something. Um, if you have any questions, um, join our collectibles Facebook group. Um, there's Cryptozoic DC Bombshells and Cryptozoic Collectibles. Both of them I am very much on and a part of. Um, and so, yeah, you can always feel free to ask me questions there. Yeah, and thanks for all the great feedback um, over the years uh, on the packaging and the product. Um, we do really appreciate it. And we yeah. she's saying, comment on the on the Facebook page and uh, we'll continue to uh, listen to that and, and do our best to, to give you guys the products you want. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, JV, for dropping all by. Right. It was fun. <laughs> thanks, guys. All right, we'll see you. Bye, stay safe, everybody.